Hi everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be going over this concept of uh, function overloading. So sometimes it's really convenient for us to just have one name for something. So let's talk about the example last time. So if we open up functions.cpp, we saw that we defined four different functions for uh, for printing out four different uh, types of values. So to print out a character, an integer, a float, or a double. So those four different data types had four different function names. But if you really think about it, it doesn't make a lot of sense because then we have to remember four different things when we want to print something out. It would be really convenient if we just had one name, say print. And that's where this concept of uh, function overloading comes in. So we'll go ahead and open up our example for today, which will be function overloading.cpp. So what is overloading? So we had the exact same uh, example as last time. This time we're using void return type, so we're not changing the very uh, the uh, we're not changing the values of the variables in the main function. We're just printing stuff out. So we don't need to have a return type. So we'll just call it void. Except this time we see something kind of strange. So we have print char c, but then we also have print int i and print float f and print, uh, print double d. Now, uh, this is that concept of overloading. So the way we get away with doing this, if you have, let's take another example. So instead, if this was say char, uh, char i again, so this would actually be illegal in the C++ uh, language and the compiler would throw a fit. So let's actually, let's actually see what happens if we try to compile this. So remember, I'm saying, I'm claiming that the problem is the fact that we're having two things that are the same name that both use the same data type as an input. So even though you know this is different, this i versus c, I'm claiming that that doesn't matter. The compiler is going to yell at us. So let's see if that's true. So let's compile it, dash o, function overloading, and then we'll pass in function overloading.cpp. Ah, and we see we got, we've got a lot of errors, or at least some notes and then some errors. So here it tells us very specifically function overloading at this line, line 14, error redefinition of void print char or print character. So we see that when the compiler is looking at these things, it doesn't care at that identifier. It just cares the name of the function and our input type as well as our output type. So our return value doesn't care about the identifiers that we use in there. So here we have a print, a void print character and another void print character. So we've got these doubling definitions. So the compiler is saying, I don't know which one you're going to want me to use at what time. So I'm going to say this is not allowed. Now what happens if we go back and we leave it the way it was? we say that this is an integer i instead. Let's compile it again. So let's, let's go ahead and clear the screen so we're back at the top. No errors. Now why is this the case? So with function overloading, as long as functions have a different signature, and so our signature will be our return type, the name of the function, and the input type. So as long as those three things, or if, as long as one of those three things are different, the function has a different signature. So the compiler can distinguish between them. So let's go ahead and run this. We'll run function overloading. Oops. And we see we get the same result at last as last time. Remember, we're not changing any values in this example. We're just showing that we can all have the same name. And this is convenient because when we're going through and writing some big project, we don't want to think, well, which print do I use? It's really convenient if we can just say, I just need to know print, not print character, print 
float print double if I just know it's print and all the work figuring out which function to call is done by the compiler it makes things really nice for myself as the programmer now let's kind of look at that idea of signatures because it may seem kind of odd they look like they're exactly the same so if we if we dump the symbol table uh, of these executables so the symbol table is just a way of uh, the compiler keeping track of all the variable names and the function names of a program and we can do that using the utility in m from the linux command line or the limit uh, linux terminal so let's do nm on functions that's our executable from last time uh, so we get a lot of things in here but we really just want the print statement so i'll do this thing that you may be oops that you may be unfamiliar with it's a command line thing for grepping which is searching uh, don't you don't have to worry about it. if you want to learn more about that maybe that'll be in another series but you know just take it it will take all the output that we just saw right there and it will search it for us so we'll pipe it to grep and we'll search for a phrase in this case it was print because we had print char print int print double print float and we see we have exactly what we expected but a little bit different so we see print char in here but we see that it's a little bit mangled right so we have this you know underscore z11 z12 z9 it's kind of messy in here and that's just a product of c++ um, we end up getting these mangled names after compilation now let's look uh, um, if there was actually a problem here the problem uh, that we saw when the compiler gave us an error it's saying that when it was building the symbol table it found two things that looked the same in the symbol table so let's look at with overloading what this looks like so this will be for function overloading we'll look for print again and we see that we get these four entries in the symbol table which will be our different prints for characters doubles floats and integers but we see that there's four different entries so clearly the compiler can tell between it it doesn't see any kind of conflicting entries that it can't uh, go between so everything's fine as long as the compiler can understand the symbol table even if we don't that's all we really care about all right that is going to do it for us today as always on the github page for coffee before arch under the C++ Crash Course repo, we have links to all of the YouTube videos as well as the concepts covered in them. All the code will always be made av uh, available. And so if we go to this example, function overloading, we get the example that we saw today. And feel free to download this and play around with it. And if you have any you know, questions or comments or there's any specific topics that you would like covered, feel free to email me here uh, a list of all the videos that are kind of in progress as well as other series are at this Google Sheets and as well as the environment that I am working on uh, as always I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and I hope you have a nice day